Hi everyone. This video is a book review about a book that I have had in my collection for a while. And the title of this book is Angels, True Stories, What Angels Do For Us. And it was written by Robert J. Morgan. As I said, I've had this book in my collection for a couple of years. I actually took it from my mother's house because she has a lot of religious books. And I like to add it to my collection that I have cataloged at home just to add some diversity. When I am finished with this book, I am going to be placing it in the little free library near my house. Now this isn't the only angel book that I have in my collection. I actually have about four other books right here. Now before I get into the review, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the publishing company and about the author. So first, let us start with the publishing company. This book was published by Thomas Nelson, which was a publishing company founded in 1798. So it's been around a little over 200 years, and it is named after its founder. It started off as a first secondhand bookstore in Edinburgh, Scotland. So it's not in Edinburgh anymore, I suppose. The company is based in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I guess the author was residing at the time of this publishing. It began laying the foundation for a rich history of publishing high quality, inspirational, and Christian content. It continued to grow its publishing strength and expertise and quickly became an industry leader in Bibles and trade books. Now, I may or may not have um, books that were published by this company. I may have a Bible published by them because they sound very, very familiar. When you go to their website, you will see that they have collections of Bibles, children's books, fiction, devotionals. It's really intriguing. Ironically, when I visited their website and I looked up this book, the buying price is $6.99. As I said, this book was published in 2011, so I don't know if it reduced the price or increased the price. Ironically, in the description, it says, Dr. Graham lifts the veil between the visible and the invisible world to give us an eye-opening account of these behind-the-scenes agents. And right here it says Robert Morgan and Billy Graham. But in my book, there was no foreword by Billy Graham. There was no mention of Billy Graham in this book at all. So I don't know if they came up with a, a second edition of it or whatnot, and why they credited Billy Graham for being the author of this book when it clearly says on the front, Robert J. Morgan, but okay. Now, when you go to the author's website, he has a very interesting biography. The way that he lays out his biography is like a curriculum vita. It says that he is the teaching pastor of the Donaldson Fellowship in Nashville, Tennessee, where he has served for over 40 years. He is a best-selling gold illuminations what is that? and gold medallion winning writer with more than 35 books in print. So he's basically like uh, Wayne Dyer, but a pastor, because Wayne Dyer wrote so many books. He is a collaborative writer for Dr. David Jeremiah and Turning Points Magazine. Rob has appeared on numerous television and radio shows. He speaks widely at churches, conferences, schools, and corporate events. Now, what's interesting about his biography is that it gives you a little insight about who he is as a person, his character, and his personal life. It says that he was a homemaker and caregiver for his late wife of 43 years, Katrina, who battled multiple sclerosis and passed away in November 2019. So his wife passed away about a month before my dad passed away, so it's very recent. He had three daughters. This man is very educated. He was born in 1952 in Elizabethton, Elizabethton Tennessee. 
Um, he graduated magna cum laude from Columbia International University. He attended King College in Bristol, Tennessee. He says, you know, degrees for miles. Very interesting. His hobbies are traveling, gardening, and cooking. So it's very nice to know that this author is well educated, has had some type of background experience because some people will write about a subject matter and they don't really have any clue. It's, they don't have any experience. They haven't studied it. So what if you are a person that's into angels? This man's tone about angels is from, I guess, a traditional Christian perspective. Now, there are books about angels out there that take on a more metaphysical tone. The only angels that he mentions by name in this book are Archangel Michael, who is protector, and Gabriel, who is a messenger angel. If you read other books that are metaphysical in nature, you will come across or be introduced to other angelic names like the Archangel, Metatron, uh, Kamuel, Raziel, and just a host of other names. But he doesn't mention them in here. So if you are a person that isn't like into just very religious tone, you can still read the book. It's, it's very interesting to learn about it. But if you're uncomfortable with it, I can understand that. Throughout the book, he shares stories from different people from different walks of life and their experiences with angels, encounters with angels. He starts off with chapter one, what the Bible says about angels. His take on it is that they are more than just messengers. They're protectors. They help us. They're watching over us. And this is shown in certain stories that he shares in the book. For example, they protect us. There was one story where there was a woman who was a missionary in a foreign country and these men were about to kill her. I don't know what time of day it was, but they were coming to her house to kill her. But when they decided to approach where she was staying, they saw that she had a guard with a sword outside of her residence. And later that um, next day, they were asking her about the guard and she's like, I don't have any guard. And they're like, well, who is that person standing watch over your residence? So she believes it was an angel. Even in the Bible, you read about like the Garden of Eden where an angel is guarding the garden so nobody could come in or re-enter lest they eat from the tree of knowledge and become immortal or something of that. It says, Judges has two prominent angel stories. Um, we have also have another cluster of angelic sightings during the time of Elisha and Elijah. Isaiah and Ezekiel had dramatic encounters with angels. The book of Daniel is full of angels, as is Zechariah, the minor prophet. Once, what's really interesting about this book is angels that come to take you away when you are dying. So there was one example in the book where a lady an elderly lady was in the process of dying. She asked the pastor, who were these men that were you know, standing at the end of her bed? And she's like, what should I say to them? She's like, you know what, I'll just tell them I belong to Jesus. And I guess the next day she died and taken to wherever she believed she was taken to. I've only had two experiences in my own life of people that I know that saw angels. One was my grandmother who passed away in 2017. But a couple of years before she passed away, maybe like seven, eight years before she passed, she woke up and her mother and her two siblings 
were standing at the end of her bed. Now her mother died of a heart attack in 1984 and her two siblings died when she was about three years old. They died in a house fire. They just, it was really, really terrible. And she told them to go away. And they did. The next example of angel stories, um, my mother had a boyfriend. He was an ex, but he had been her longtime ex-boyfriend throughout my childhood. And his, his, uh, most of his life he smoked. So he ended up developing lung cancer. And as he was dying, his, one of his sisters was in the room and his little girl, she's about 17 now, but at the time she was like 11, 12. She was in the room too. And he told his sister, huh, I see Bev. Bev was his sister, Beverly, who had died a couple of years before. And he said, I see Bev. She says she's going to go get mom. Now his mother had died as well. Now what's interesting about this whole story is that he was an atheist. My mother is very religious, but he was an atheist. I don't know if he um, turned religious near the end of his life. Like for a while, my dad was an atheist while he was still alive, and I think he like became more spiritual near the end of his life. But I just found that very interesting. The stories that you hear of people or angels coming to get you, and usually it's someone you recognize. Usually it's someone you recognize taking you on to the next plane of existence. Huh. Anyway, so it says, Angels are in awe of God's moral goodness and worship him incessantly for his pure and burning holiness. And he shares in the Bible, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, Isaiah 6, 3. They understand that God's holiness provides the moral baseline for the cosmos and that judgment is the natural consequence of evil. They are themselves subject to judgment. Though fallen angels are not the topic of this book, I'd be remiss to neglect them. I thought that was pretty interesting because you do read about fallen angels in the Bible. And then the Bible also says that we're a little bit lower than the angels so I don't see I don't see angels as perfect I also don't think angels just come in one form according to this book most of the forms that they come in are uh, in the human body it even states in the Bible that sometimes you are entertaining angels unaware a couple of the stories that he mentioned, the people didn't see a person just materialize before their eyes. They just ended up getting help at the time that they needed help. Like one woman was trying to go to her train or go to her airplane and she couldn't bring her bags up all of these stairs like it was too hard. And a man appeared out of nowhere and said, I will help you and helped her and then disappeared. Then she needed more help. And the same man came again and said, I will help you. And then disappeared again. She couldn't find him to thank him. They come to minister. They come to bring food. There was one story where um, there was a guy and when he was a child, his father was very, very abusive. And his father was having one of his uh, tantrums, I guess alcoholic tantrums, and the little boy ran up to his room because he thought his father was going to kill him. And he asked God, could he please handle the situation? Or if his dad killed him, could he just take him up to heaven to be with God so that he wouldn't have to suffer through this experience and what was interesting was not long after the prayer some random guy knocked on the door he came to fix the sink or something in the house 
and the dad forgot about his angry tantrum. And when the boy came downstairs to see what was going on, the appliance man winked at him. So he believes that this man was an angel. I think that, I think that could be a possibility. Now, the only thing that kind of, I really liked this book. The only part about the book I was uncomfortable with were the stories of missionaries. And this is only from my personal experience being in a very religious school and reading stories about missionaries. They didn't give the full story of what the missionaries did. They just painted them with, in a beautiful light all of the time when in most cases that was not the case. So I had difficulty reading stories in this book about missionaries going to different countries and trying to spread their message and indoctrinate people into their belief system, you know, like kind of sideways insulting. But I still think that the stories that the author gave were very relevant. Like the, perhaps the missionaries did have people protecting them. Sometimes, maybe it wasn't an angel, maybe it was an ancestor, who knows? I have heard of angels coming in other forms. One woman that I know, the angel that came to her was just a tall, tall beam of light. Another person, um, they, the angel came to them in the sound of angelic music. Like they didn't even see anything. They just heard angelic music. It says, angels deliver us from judgment. <laughs> this book also contains very beautiful pictures. Like, look at this photography. It has statues of angels from around all over the place. Statues of angels in rest. Statues of angels praying. He even states that in the Bible, Jesus could have called the angels to come to his assistance, but he didn't. Angels assist God in answering our prayers. Mm -hmm. Angels teach us to worship. 24 elders. Mm -hmm. There's one story where a man's brother had gotten murdered and he went to take a shower then on the anniversary of his brother's death his wife asked why did you keep asking me to sing that song because the day he he found out his brother died or the night he did he kept asking his wife to sing be still my soul he said didn't i tell you when i got in the shower the ceiling suddenly parted and the angels in heaven sang that hymn to me it gave me strength i needed to make it through the painful days the only question I have, the only thing that confuses me about angels is why God would need any type of assistance. Maybe, maybe it's a hierarchy. He also mentions hierarchies of angels. There's a seraphim, there's a cherubim, there's all sorts of different levels of angels. Now in metaphysical books, you're going to get even more definitions but in here I think he only mentions the seraphim and the cherubim anything that the Bible states I don't know I wonder why would we really we do need angels I suppose but I wonder why we can't just access God directly I don't know maybe God works in mysterious ways but other than that I thought this was a very interesting book. I could relate to some of the stories. Um, I really enjoyed the images in there. Even though I was kind of uncomfortable about the missionary stories, I believe that they were very good examples of how angels can protect you from danger, whether they appear in the form of a pillar of fire, whether they um, just appear out of nowhere when you most need them in disguise. This was a very nice, beautiful, beautifully written book about that subject matter. And I look forward to reading more books by Robert J. Morgan. 
So thank you all for watching this video and have a beautiful day.